Hello, and welcome to another Bacon Bits video. My name is Noah Allen, and I'm a hog product support specialist at ETC. This video is going to cover setting up multiple hog consoles on a network, as well as how to handle failover behavior. Let's jump right into it. When connecting consoles and processors to a network, it is required that each device be running the same software version on the same subnet and port. Each console and processor has two network adapters. The first adapter, HogNet, is for communicating the show data between Hog consoles. The second port, FixtureNet, is used to communicate DMX data to other devices like ArtNet and streaming ACN nodes. For the sake of recording screens, we'll be using Hog4PC in this video, but the same concepts can be applied to all of our consoles. Before starting our show, let's set our console's network settings. For our primary console, Let's go into the control panel. Here we will find the HogNet and FixtureNet tab. The default IP address for HogNet is 172.31.0.1. We could leave it with default settings, however, I prefer to change it. Just in case another console is added to the network, I don't want default IPs to compete. So let's change this to 172.31.0.11. On our second console, we'll use a custom IP address of 172.31.0.12. Let's take a look at our FixtureNet network. Note the default IP address for FixtureNet is 10.0.0.1. Since this is our primary console, let's follow a similar schema. We'll make this 10.0.0.11. On our second console, we'll give it an IP address of 10.0.0.12 and apply these settings. One thing I like about the new start screen layout is the ability to see the HogNet and FixtureNet IP addresses directly on the screen. This all looks good, so now let's take a look at our startup settings. There are a few things to note here. Our console number, our processor number, as well as our port. The console number determines the behavior of the console functions, like pages and faders. The processor number determines settings for DMX processing and universe output. Those settings can be configured once we're in our show file. The port number allows for multiple show files to be ran on the same network. Since we're setting up a tracking console and processor system, we will have our primary console as one, processor as one, and in our second console, we will keep these exact same settings. Let's launch into a new show. Now that we're in our new show, we can see that on the second console, we're not able to launch into a show, only connect to the one on the network. If we wanted to launch a different show on this console, we would need to change the port. Let's go ahead and connect. Now that we're connected, let's take a look at our network window by pressing Setup and Network. Keep in mind that this window only shows hog devices on the HogNet network. It will not show other devices like ArtNet and streaming ACN nodes fixtures, or other third-party devices. Note that there is a second processor, but it's idle. Since there is already a processor with the same number on the network, this idle processor will not output any data until the other one goes off the network. Some things to note when both consoles have the same console number. All directory items are synced together. This means any groups, views, palettes, queues, or scenes will be available on either desk. Each desk will have its own programmer, Values in the programmer can be overridden, but not cleared from each other. Fader levels, chosen master, and page changes will track on both consoles. Let's take a look at what happens when we disconnect the primary from the network. I've gone ahead and added some fixtures to my show. What I like to do when I test network failover is have my lights do some sort of movement. That way, it is obvious if my lights lose data, because they'll stop moving. As you can see, when I took the primary console off the network, the secondary console took over the show, and our lights are still running smoothly. Let's take a look at another setup. This time, instead of our second console running as a backup, let's add it as a second desk. This will give us independent control of pages, masters, and faders. This is especially useful when multiple operators are working together on the same show. For our first console, we'll leave the same settings, console one and processor one. On our second console, we will adjust the console to be 2 and processor to be 1. Let's launch on console 1 and connect on 2. With this kind of console setup, just like before, 
all directory items are synced together. This means any groups, views, palettes, queues, or scenes will be available on either desk. Each desk will have its own programmer. Values in each programmer can be overridden, but not cleared from each other. However, with this setup, each console will not be linked in regards to current page or chosen master. This allows two operators to run and navigate the show at the same time with ease. Let's take a look at what happens when we disconnect the primary from the network. Just like before, our lights are still running. Since the second console was running its processor as an idle processor number one, when the running processor number one left the network, the idle processor took over. Let's log off this console and show one more possible setup. This time, on the secondary console, we will make it processor two. Let's launch on our primary and connect on our client. We can see that we have console one and two, as well as processor one and two. Note that if there are not any outputs or fixtures patched to a processor, it'll display idle. Let's disconnect our primary one more time. Note how the lights have stopped moving. This is because the second console is also processor two. Since the lights were looking for universe one, which is mapped to the first processor, they lost their data. Thank you for watching this Bacon Bits video. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at HES Service at etcconnect.com.